Did you know there is an emotional and occasionally psychological state outside of sleeping that is medicine to the brain? Hello all, welcome to the Matter of Facts channel. In this video, we will show you how neuroscience is discovered an emotional and psychological state that we experience often and how it repairs your brain without you even knowing it. Your brain works 24 seven. Even when you're asleep, the brain is thinking, dealing with stressors and subconscious activities to keep you safe and sound. It's resolving solutions, making decisions and thinking about possibilities even when you're not aware of them. This amazing always on organ is so devoted, it never takes a break even while you're sleeping. Much as the human brain has its large capacity to function, it also has its limits. Alicia Wolf, a neuroscientist and senior lecturer in the Department of Cognitive Science at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, says it's critical for brain health to let yourself be bored from time to time. But before we show you why science says boredom is good from time to time, what is boredom? Has society historically always dealt with boredom, or is this something relatively new? According to the 2012 issue of Perspectives on Psychological Science, boredom in the conventional usage is an emotional and occasionally psychological state experienced when an individual is left without anything in particular to do, is not interested in their surroundings, or feel that a day or period is dull or tedious. Boredom may be the result of a combination of factors, an actual boring situation, a predisposition to boredom, or even an indication of an underlying mental condition. A popular misconception is that Charles Dickens coined the term boredom in his 20-episode serial Bleak House, published in 1853. The word, however, has been used since at least 1829 in the issue of the publication The Albion. As an emotional state, it dates back a lot further. Roman philosopher Seneca talked about boredom as a kind of a nausea, while Greek historian Plutarch notes that he became desperately bored in his retirement. Dr. Peter Tuhay, a classic professor at the University of Calgary, traced the path of being bored in a 2011 book, Boredom, A Lively History. Among the stories he uncovered was one from the 2nd century AD, in which one Roman official was memorialized with a public inscription for rescuing an entire town from boredom. In Christian traditions, chronic boredom was acedia, a sin that is indeed considered a precursor to today's laziness. It wasn't until 1930 that science took a serious interest in boredom. In 1938, psychologist Joseph Ephraim Barmick looked at how factory workers cope with boredom and the monotony of being a factory worker. Barmick was particularly concerned with what can be termed situational boredom, the kind of boredom that is perceived as a temporary state, such as being on a long car ride. Later on, political scientist Eric Ringmar points out in his contribution to the Boredom Studies Reader, boredom often comes about when we are constrained to pay attention, and in modern urban society, there is simply so much more that human beings were expected to pay attention to. Factory whistles, school bells, traffic signals, office rules, bureaucratic procedures, chalk and talk lectures, or Zoom meetings. The psychologist Sandy Mann in her 2016 book, The Science of Boredom, argues that boredom is the new stress, a condition that people are reluctant to own up to, just as they once were hesitant to admit to stress. To confess that you're stressed implies that you're needed, busy, important. To say that you're bored suggests that you lack imagination or initiative or a job that reflects your passions. So, what does the study say? According to Sammy Perone, who is an assistant professor at Washington State University in Pullman, everybody experiences boredom. However, some people experience it a lot, which is unhealthy. For this reason, Perone and colleagues from Washington State University decided to conduct a study focusing on what boredom looks like in the brain. The study's findings, which now appear in the Journal of Psychophysiology Trusted Sources, might help them identify the best ways of coping with boredom so that this state does not end up affecting mental health. To begin, the research team believed there was a hardwiring difference in the brain of people who reacted negatively to boredom versus those individuals who experience no ill effects when they are bored. However, initial tests using electrocephalogram caps to measure participants' brain activity proved them wrong. Previously, they thought people who reacted more negatively to boredom would have specific brain waves prior to being bored. But in baseline tests, they couldn't differentiate the brain waves. It was only when they were in a state of boredom that their differences surfaced. So, if there was no differences in terms of brain hardwiring, then what could explain why boredom affected some people more adversely than others? The researchers decided that the most likely explanation was the individual response. Some people simply reacted poorly to being bored, which could affect their well-being. People who report high levels of boredom propensity have an avoidant disposition. For example, these individuals are more likely to experience depression and anxiety. Based on these premises, researchers argue that it's possible to find ways of coping with states of boredom so they become less likely to affect mental health. However, Perone and his team had to solve another mystery. What does boredom look like in the brain? 
brain activity in those prone to boredom, the researchers recruited 54 young adult participants. The researchers asked volunteers to fill in the survey asking questions about boredom patterns and how they reacted to feeling bored. Then, after a baseline EEG test measuring normal brain activity, the researchers assigned the participants a tedious task. They had to turn eight virtual pegs on the screen as the computer highlighted them. This activity lasted approximately 10 minutes, during which time the researchers used EEG caps to measure participants' brain activity as they carried out boring tasks. In assessing the brainwave maps obtained via EEGs, the researchers looked specifically at activity levels in the right frontal and left frontal areas of the brain. That was because these two regions become active for different reasons. The left frontal part becomes more active when an individual is looking for stimulus or distraction from a situation by thinking about something different. On the other hand, the front rightal part of the brain becomes more active when the individual experiences negative emotions or states of anxiety. Researchers found that participants who had reported being more prone to boredom daily displayed more activity in the right frontal brain area during a repetitive task as they became increasingly bored. People who are good at coping with boredom in everyday life, based on a survey, shifted more towards the left. Those that don't cope as well in everyday life shifted more right. Alicia Wolf is a senior lecturer in the Department of Cognitive Science at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and a neuroscientist with extensive research into body, brain, and mind relationships. She's here to tell us why it's critical to let yourself be bored from time to time. Alicia Wolf says being bored can improve overall brain health. During exciting times, the brain releases a chemical called dopamine, which is associated with feeling good. When the brain has fallen into a predictable, monotonous pattern, Many people feel bored because we have lower levels of dopamine, which is good for the brain. Boredom can improve our mental health. In this age, our brains are overloaded with information and distractions. The wealth of information means the scarcity of attention. Attention uses one limited cognitive resources for productive activities. So taking a break can be a valuable opportunity to help our overloaded brains relax and alleviate stress. Boredom can enable creativity and problem solving by allowing the brain to wander and daydream, which leads to creative ways of thinking. In the absence of external stimulation, we use our imagination and think in different ways. Boredom motivates a search for novelty. Without boredom, humans would not have the taste for adventure and novelty seeking that makes us who we are, intelligent, curious, and constantly seeking out the next thing. Novelty seeking implies dissatisfaction with the status quo and the willingness to challenge established ideas and practices. Great achievements are facilitated by dissatisfaction with the status quo. Boredom motivates the pursuit of new goals. It is an emotional signal that we are not doing what we would like to be doing. Being bored means that we are currently engaged not only in an uninteresting or unchallenging situation, but also in a situation that fails to meet our expectations and desires. Boredom encourages us to shift to goals and projects that are more fulfilling than the ones we're currently pursuing. Boredom and self-control skills can affect the ability to focus and pay attention because the interest is lost. Among students, boredom results in disengagement from class and poor performance. They can feel bored when they lack the cognitive resources to focus. The ability to focus and self-regulate is correlated with the ability to handle boredom. Learning to endure boredom at a young age is great preparation for developing self-control skills. Given these benefits, we should embrace boredom rather than look for an immediate escape. We should also allow our minds to wander because boredom can be an opportunity for reflection on what we want in life. On average, adults in the United States experience 131 days of boredom per year. It gets a bad rap because many people believe that that state of boredom equates with a lack of productivity or focus on a given task. Hey guys, we come to the end of the video. Do you think in today's society being bored equates to a lack of productivity or focus? Please let me know in the comment section and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.